Matthew chapter number 10 this morning. If you've got your Bibles, Matthew chapter number 10. I encourage you, if you, if you have a Bible, turn, turn there with us. If you don't, it'll be up here on the screen here in just a moment. And uh, you guys follow along with us. I encourage you to take notes. It's always good to take notes. Amen. My pastor always told me, don't always take my word for it. And I thought, well, man, you're the preacher. Now you're my pastor. He said, don't take my word for it. Why don't you go look it up for yourself? Amen. And it'll do us some good every now and then to get our Bibles out and uh, see about what the preacher's talking about. Amen. Where's he getting this stuff from? Amen. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 10. I'm going to have to ask you all this morning. I need to see some smiles. Amen. Can I see a few smiles? Amen. It's not. There you go. There you go. That's good. Amen. Where's Brandon? Brandon, I don't, let me see a smile up there from the balcony. Amen. All right. It's not that bad. Hey, this is church. Amen. We're not at a funeral. Amen. We're serving a risen Savior. Amen. Glad to be in church this morning. Verse number 5. The Bible says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I want you to notice here, he says, And as ye go, preach. I want you to see that word go. He, he mentions the word go in verse number 5. He mentions the word go in verse number 6. He mentions the word go in verse number 7. In verse number 8, he said, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils freely. Ye have received, freely give. Pro provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who, it, who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if, not, if, if the house be not worthy, let your peace come upon, upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. I want you to look at this verse here. This is going to be our text verse. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart out of the house or city, shake off the dust of, of, of your feet. Shake off the dust of your feet. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. Lord, we thank you, God, for the opportunity once again uh, Lord, to be in your house, I pray, God, that you'd help me to preach now for just a few minutes. Uh, Lord, I pray, God, that you would uh, help us, Lord, to uh, take these words to heart this morning. Lord, I ask you, Lord, I, I ask for your grace and your mercy on our nation. God, I, I plead with you not to shake the dust off your feet concerning America. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd help us now. Lord, for just a little while, as we, uh, Lord, study your word, I pray, God, that you would not let it go out void, but, Lord, I pray, God, that it would find a resting place in every heart that's sitting in here this morning. Lord, we sure do love you. I pray, God, that you'd empty me out of my sin, cleanse me out of myself. God, that you could use me this morning. We'll be sure to thank you and praise you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Here in this passage of Scripture, I see a few things this morning uh, that kind of reminds me or makes me think or puts me in the mind or the thought of our nation, Brother Greg. He says, go out. He's telling preachers. He's telling these disciples. He's telling these men of God to go out, preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, do the work of the Lord. Amen is essentially what he's saying. Uh, be about my father's business. Be about what I'm doing. Uh, go out and preach the gospel. Go out and, uh, and lead others to Christ. And man, there's preachers all across this nation this morning that are doing just that. There's preachers uh, uh, and Christians all throughout this country that are trying to accomplish the jobs uh, of, of the evangelist, of a preacher, of a Christian, trying to uh, lead others to Christ. Amen. Because that's, that's the Great Commission. That's what 
what we're told to do. That's our commandment, Brother Eddie, is to share Christ with others. Our experience with Christ, what He's done for us, our testimony uh, with others. Amen. Now, obviously, we're not going to be able to raise the sick or heal the dead or anything like that. Amen. Uh, we're not going to be able to do those things because that time has passed. But we can preach the gospel. We can share the gospel with others. We can tell others just what He's done for us. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. See, our nation was founded on the gospel. Amen? It wasn't founded on any other religion than Christianity. Regardless of what they're trying to teach our children in schools today, our nation was founded on that Bible. Our nation was founded on the morals that are found in this Bible. The guidelines that God, that Jesus Christ set forth for us to follow, that's what our nation was founded upon. Amen. Religious freedom. Amen. And listen, uh, uh, the past uh, uh, of our country at one time, man, uh, we, would, uh, we, we celebrated the American flag. We celebrated what it stood for. We celebrated the book. Amen. That King James Bible. We celebrated the fact that Jesus Christ is alive and well. Listen, it was preached all across the country. Amen. But my, my, how things have changed. My, my, how things have changed. Our present, listen, our forefathers built this country on Christianity, Christian morals, Christian values, salvation by grace through faith. And our present condition does not mirror that same cause. Amen. We're living in, listen, we're living in the last days. I believe at just any minute now that the Lord Jesus Christ could come back. Brother Greg, there's nothing left as far as prophecy is concerned to be done except His return. Brother John, would you agree? Everything's in place. Amen. It's all there. Everything's, everything's set up to be for, to, to, for us to see the Lord Jesus Christ return. But man, our country has fallen. Would you say there's been a great falling away in this country? In the state of California, in the state of California, they softened the laws on pedophiles. They lightened the sentencing and they softened the laws, but they won't allow Dr. Jack Treber at North Valley Baptist Church to go to have church service. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They're letting they're letting convicts outlaws out of prison. And they're making outlaws out of Christians. Are y'all here? How backwards? How backwards? Right here in Scripture, number one, we see the expectations of the gospel in verses five through seven. The expectations of the gospel, and it's simply just this right here go. Verse 5, 6, and 7, he says three different times, go, go, go. Amen. He's telling the disciples, he's sending them. The Bible even says here, I'm going to send you in verse number. Uh, later on, he says, <clears throat> he says that he's sending them as sheep among wolves. And that's exactly where we're at today. Amen. We're, uh, the Lord is sending us out as sheep among wolves. Amen. And, 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 and He's saying, listen, He's pretty much saying it, it's, going to be, it's going to be pretty bad. But go. Go. We've got to go. We've got to get out there. We've got to, sh we've got to share and spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what it is, Brother Greg. It is the good news. 
I know there's a lot of bad news today, and some of what I'm saying this morning may have you just a little bit discouraged, but the fact of the matter is, we still have a chance. We still have hope. If you're in here this morning and you're thinking, man, what am I going to do? What could I do? Uh, listen, you put your hope and your trust and your faith in Him. It's the only chance we've got. It's the only hope that we've got. Amen? I know a lot of times if we look around, if you turn on the news for five minutes, listen, you're going to be so depressed and crazy. <laughs> Amen? I had to quit watching it. It was about to drive me insane. Every morning, me and Bobby get to work. I, I say, Bobby, did you hear about this? It's always something crazy, insane. Did you see what happened? Amen. And just as I preached last week on Sodom and Gomorrah, listen to me, the judgment of God is going to fall on this nation if we don't go and start preaching the gospel. Listen to me. If, if, he, if God doesn't judge America, He's going to have to apologize and rebuild Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. And He don't apologize for nothing. And He ain't going to rebuild Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. The judgment of God, the wheels of the judgment of God may turn slowly, but they do turn. Amen. And they will turn. If we don't start going. Amen. We're, we're, in, we're in a time right now, Brother Eddie, where if we got to start telling with a sense of urgency. Amen. Every store that we go into, every time somebody, every, every person that we come in contact with, we ought to be saying, listen, uh, I, I just want to let you know uh, that Jesus Christ loves you and He died for your sins. Amen. At least that. At least something. Amen. Because there is a sense of urgency. Hey, it's 911. It's an emergency. Amen. Are you all with me? Somebody say amen. Grunt. Something. Amen. I want to hear some noise. <laughs> Amen. Like a Georgia football game. Let me hear some noise. Man, I'm just kidding. Yeah, there we go. Amen. Amen. There we go. We got the dogs in here. Amen. Oh. God help. Somebody help that boy. Get him, get him on the altar. Let's get him right. Amen. <laughs> Pray for his daddy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all got me thrown off now. We got to go. We got to go. Listen, I've got lost family that's, that's not saved. But I feel, like, I feel like, Brother Keith, that we ought to be bringing it up every time I talk to them. At least, at least something. At least a comment. Boy, the Lord's sure been good. Put, it, put that seed in there. Some, because listen, because what's going to happen is, is one day, the, like, just like the Bible tells us, and it's right, and it's always been right, that as, as a thief in the night, it's just going to happen. And we're going to be standing at the judgment seat of Christ, and we're going to see, listen to me, we're going to see our, our family members drop off into hell. And we're going to sit there and have to, and have to answer for why we didn't at least just tell them about the gospel. How selfish is it of me? Stay tuned here. How selfish is it of me, Brother Morris, to enjoy this good life that I have of salvation and the blessings of God, and the grace of God, and the mercy of God. Every day that I wake up, Brother Greg, my Bible tells me that His mercies are new every single day, and I get to enjoy that. And how selfish of me is it to enjoy that and to not tell the people that I love the most that they could have the same thing if they want it. Because why? Because I'm scared of what they might say? Because I'm ner because because I'm bashful or shy. God have mercy on us. He said to go. Go. 
And that, I, think, I think we ought to be doing it as much as we possibly can. Amen? In verses number 5 through 8, we see the entry of the gospel. We see first the expectations of the gospel. <clears throat> see the entry of the gospel. In verse number 6, we see the gospel moving. But go rather, and as ye go. Again, he's telling us, get the gospel out there. Go. The gospel's a real thing. It's real. Amen. I've seen people's lives change a total turnaround from what they used to be. I'm one of them. Amen. At 16 years old, when I bowed myself on an altar and I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart and to save me, forgive me of my sins. Hey, everything in me changed on that night. You say, how could it be? Because it's real. Amen. I didn't go up and sign some card. Amen. Just put my name on a card at some concert. No, a preacher got up and preached the gospel, and I fell under conviction. Amen, Miss Joanne, I fell under real, real deal conviction where I thought, if I, I thought if I walked out that back door without getting down and praying and asking Him for to save me, that I'd die and go to hell. I was so scared. And, and listen to me, everybody saw it, Brother Jim. It wasn't just, it wasn't just me feeling it. I, I had a lady walk up to me and say, Are you, are you sick? During the handshaking time, I was sitting back there sweating. She said, are you okay? You're not acting yourself. I said, I'm fine. I'm good. The choir got up and sang. They sang a special. And that bald-headed preacher of mine got up in the middle of that song and he said, somebody here is lost. And I thought, who told him? And I'm sitting there between my aunt and uncle, and I'm just about to have a stroke. Real deal. And I'm thinking, man, if I don't get up out of this pew, I'm going to die right here, right now, and go to hell. Y'all with me? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody help me. And he said, here's what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to have them sing one more verse before I preach. If you're lost, why don't you come? It was like he knew. <laughs> and they no more got the first word out of their mouth. And I was coming to this altar. And listen, there wasn't anything special that I said, Brother Al. I didn't have some kind of special... All I said, listen, all I said was, Lord, save me. I don't want to die and go to hell. That's all it took. It didn't have, I didn't have to repeat after me. I didn't have to say some kind of chant. I didn't have, listen, I didn't have to read off of some card. Listen, all I said was, Lord, save me. I don't want to die and go to hell. And hell, you know what? He did. Because he said he would, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And I'm glad that night I was a whosoever Christian. Amen. It wasn't because of my money. Because I didn't even know what money was. Amen. I had holes in my clothes, in my shoes. Amen. Poor. It wasn't because of my money. It wasn't because of the house I lived in. Amen. Because, Brother Jim, I'd never lived in a real stick-built house. My whole entire life, I ever lived in a one-bedroom or two-bedroom single-wide trailer with holes in the walls. It wasn't because of the house I lived in. It wasn't because of the cars that we drove. <laughs> Amen. It wasn't because of my daddy's bank account or his last name. I promise you that. Because you go to where I'm from and ask them about the brags, they're probably going to run from you. Amen. Or start checking the seat, looking at wanted papers. Mm -hmm. 
It wasn't because of any of my status, because I didn't have none. Nobody, Brother Jim, nobody knew who I was. Brother Keith, nobody knew my name. The kids at school didn't talk to me. Hey, I didn't have money. I didn't have popularity. I didn't have anything. But God said, I've got a whole life that I want to give you eternal. Amen. God said, I love you enough that I sent my son to die for you. Amen. The gospel moves. And when it moves in and takes hold, man, it'll change your life. The Bible tells us that old things will pass away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. It's real. But here's what I want us to look at for just a minute this morning, and I'll be done. In verse number, verse number 14, 13 and 14, we see the exit of the gospel. We see the exit of the gospel. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, what's he say? Let your peace return to you. Whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of the house of, or city, shake off the dust off your feet. Number one, we see the peace gone. Verse number 13. We see the peace gone. Would you say that that's America today? I'd say the peace is moving out. Amen. Peace is moving out. You drive through some of these cities right now and they're totally destroyed. Somebody's calling me right now. They don't know who I am. Telemarketers, amen. I'm trying to sell me extended warranty on my 1998 GMC. Amen. That I bought for $500 from my uncle. The peace of God is moving out. Amen. These, these, these cities are destroyed. I'm seeing video after video, post after post of people just being attacked for no reason. For the color of their skin, whether it be white, black, whatever. Being attacked. People protesting on what for on either side, it don't matter. The peace is gone. And let me just say that when the peace of God leaves a nation or leaves a place, it's not a place I want to be. Amen. The grace of God is it, it, when when the gospel leaves, the grace leaves with it. Mercy. Because let me just say this. We're living on God's mercy and grace right now. As wicked and vile as this nation is, we're just barely hanging on, and it's because of His grace and His mercy. That's it. When God went, when God went to Abraham and He told him, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and he, he, listen, He told him, I won't if there's a remnant there. I believe in our nation we have a small remnant. But it's getting smaller by the day. I hate to say it. There's preachers falling. There's preachers going the other way. Compromising. Amen. Quitting. Giving up. Chasing women or money. Amen. Our nation is vile. Like I said, in the state of California, they're almost legalizing pedophilia. How sickening. How did we get here? Because we reject the gospel. There's a movie 
Maybe y'all have heard about it. Just come out on Netflix. Where it, 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 it's, it's, brother, brother John, 11 year old girls exposing themselves, dancing provocative, filth. It is straight. Listen to me. And I don't apologize for saying it's wicked. It's wicked. It turns my stomach. And as the father of a little girl, so help me. So help me. God help her if she does some junk like that. Amen. But I hope she never thinks about it. Why? Because I want to put the gospel into her. I want to preach to her. I want to pump the Bible into her. I want to pour God into her because that's the only chance. Brother Greg, that's the only chance that our kids have today is the gospel. Amen? That's the only chance that they've got. If we think, amen, if we think that we can leave the, uh, the, 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 the condition of our children and our children's minds and our, ch- and our country up to the school system and up to the government, hey, we, listen to me, we've done lost our minds. She, he's with me. That's right. He's helping me. Amen. It's the only chance we've got. And I know some people may be sitting here th- this morning, oh, that's just another preacher. Okay. Roll the dice. I think, I'm, I'm trying to get off of this movie. I'm trying. But I think they ought to charge the parents, send them to prison for child endangerment. And anybody that lets their kids watch it. Amen. And if y'all don't know what I'm, don't go home and look it up. That's the condition of our nation. Right there. There's people fighting to defend this filth, this very movie. Brother Greg, news channels, they're they're, they're trying to defend it. Those actions. But they think that church, they're locking the doors on the church because it's harming people. Y'all with me? I know it's probably not what y'all showed up to hear this morning, but it's the, it's the message. It's the message for this time. Amen. And let's look here. Let me get verse 15. You say, what happens then when he dusts his feet off concerning our nation? Verse number 15. You trying to get it? Get my Bible. It says, Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So what he's saying is, if God comes to a place and He tries to give the gospel and He tries to do the good work, and he's, but we reject it, we reject it as we're doing now. Amen? What happens? He said it, it'd be better... It's better, more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than it is for that nation. And let me remind y'all real quick what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. 
God rained down fire and brimstone and destroyed that nation. And everybody, Brother John, everybody but three people in it died. That was Lot and his two daughters. Everybody else was destroyed. You say, well, that couldn't happen to us. Just stand by. Just watch. You don't believe me? I can't make you. Brother Ed can't make you. Brother Morris, brother these men, we can't make you believe it. But if you open that Bible and look and just read it, you'll see that everything that it has said will come to pass is coming to pass. Every single word of it is true. Every word. And a lot of people will say, oh, it's just written by men. Oh, okay. I'm telling you, every word of this book is true. Amen. All the way down to the maps at the back. Y'all getting what I'm saying? The concordance. The name tag in the front is right. Y'all getting what I'm saying? I believe in these ribbons hanging out of the bottom of it. Amen. The cow that was slaughtered to put a cover on it. Somebody say amen. I hope they made a T-bone steak out of it. Amen. Here's my warning. I'm done. I'm going to get my wife to come to the piano. Here, here's, and you say, what did all, what'd you say all that for? To say this right here, and I'm done. The only hope, Brother Jim, that we have left is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's putting our hope and our trust and our faith and everything we got in Him. Y'all, y'all ever hear it saying, don't put, all your, don't put all your eggs in one basket? Well, that's one basket. You can put your eggs. You can count the chickens before they hatch, everything. Because what he says, he will do. Amen.